Something I do is I like to buy scripts to movies or television shows, and I like to compare them. And have you ever really watched a movie or a TV show and wondered how much it changed from its original script? Well, there's a reason for that. And that reason today, my friends, is because, as it says from feedback to final draft, perfecting a screenplay, today is all about getting uh, feedback to uh, from your table read uh, and ultimately uh honing and adjusting your screenplay. And that's the process. You know, uh, what is filmed on screen isn't necessarily the shooting script uh, because it goes through many phases. And sometimes they'll even do, and I'm sure you've heard of this, where they have an audience screening and uh, they get some uh, feedback from the audience and they go and they do reshoots or they, uh, you know, fix the ending or whatever the case may be. So that is a part of a process. So how, do, how does that process look? How do they take that feedback well, the last video was all about doing a table read with an audience present. And so this is going to be about taking the audience feedback and doing something. Why is that important, though, Thomas? Well, you know, it's essential for refining your screenplay, uh, it, which helps enhance it uh, and its clarity, its emotional impact and overall narrative flow, making it more engaging. And uh, that's the thing. Like if you're an audience is reacting and responding to your stuff in real time, you, uh, you, might, you might have something there. So uh, what is the fifth draft of a screenplay anyway. Well, in this situation, it is basically revising the script based on detailed feedback from uh, the actors performing on the table read and the audience members who participated in uh, observing the table read. Uh, basically, it helps focus on cleaning up issues rather than overhaul story. So the fifth draft is not a rewrite. It's a clean up. It's doing, it's it's sort of like uh, the little things. You just put down all the tiles. Now you got to go and wash the, the, the grout off the tiles now this uh this uh lesson there will be no walkthrough because there's nothing to walk through i'm not you know hey give us that does eat this bit right uh but i well i have four strong tips for you uh when approaching feedback etc etc so let's let's start with number one getting the most out of feedback the short of it Organize the feedback thematically, character development, dialogue, pacing, etc. Prioritize changes based on the frequency and severity of the feedback. You have to detach yourself from personal biases and consider the feedback objectively. Now, uh, decide what resonates uh, most with your vision and what will improve the script fundamentally. The long of it, and if I may, Remember, uh, all feedback is not finalized. Like if somebody says you should do this or I didn't like that, it does not mean change it. It just means it was feedback. But you ultimately have the final say. You are the creative. Does that mean you should ignore it? No. Does that mean you should change it? Maybe. We don't know. It's really a matter of uh, move, and, move and adjust, move and adjust, right? But anyway, so the long of it, if we're really going to look into it, uh, the first step is always categorize. You got to categorize that feedback and it helps you kind of like break it down into what's really being said. How much of the comments are about pacing? What? How much is it about characters? How much is it about world building? How much is it about whatever the case may be, right? Uh, so that's important. If you could look at that, you'll be able to kind of see what has the most, uh, the, the most issues and obviously the one with the most issues might be the priority however if one audience member or or let's say the minority of the audience so let's say you have 10 people watching and uh and three of them all say uh you know they didn't like the, the main character but uh seven of them did you still listen but uh, it might not be a priority because the majority is the rule right uh, but anyway, so after you categorize everything into uh, specific areas, you know, from uh, character development, dialogue, pacing, plot, etc., uh, this will help you address the areas without overlooking critical comments. The other thing is, once you have this, you want to prioritize. Focus on feedback that was consistently noted by multiple participants. Uh, again, majority rules. All right. And also, you want to try to detach personal bias. Remember, they're not attacking you. They're not uh, disqualifying you as a writer. Writing is a process. No one is amazing the first time. It's impossible. You're, you're writing 
unless you're writing a script where it's just you talking and the character is you and you're just talking like i would say it's perfect because you know you there might be things that don't make sense to people and it's just rambling but whatever that's what you went for but once you start bringing in different people and different perspectives and different povs and there's a plot you, <coughs> you know there's a lot going on so it's easy to become uh, attached to specific scenes or dialogues but it's crucial crucial to view feedback objectively this means just consider how changing uh, something can enhance a story, even if it requires cutting or significantly altering parts you personally like. Now, remember, the original exists. So if you have to change or alter anything, it's just trying something. Just because you change it, unless you don't save it, uh, doesn't mean the original doesn't exist. Like, it's still there. So, like, you could be like, let's see what this feels like. I don't like it. So let's go back to the original. You know what I'm saying? It's like why I want people like, hey, if somebody licenses your books, uh, do you care if they change anything? No, because the books exist. <laughs> what, do I, what do I care? If you want, if you want the original intent, go read the books. If you want a uh, an interpretation, I was just making this comment the other day. Game of Thrones is essentially a fanfic, and why I say that is because the first couple of seasons, uh, uh, or the first several seasons, or whatever. Uh, are based uh, loosely, loosely on the books, right? And then uh, the last few seasons are not. The last few, they're all made up. Like everything that's there, except for a couple a couple small elements, they ultimately, R.R. R. Martin has already said that the books do not end like the television show. So it was fanfic, you know, and that's the thing. It's just a different medium. Anyway, the other thing is uh, the feedback. You want it to align with your vision. So you have to evaluate each piece of feedback each piece of feedback to determine whether it aligns with your vision for the screenplay. And, and this uh, is where you learn to implement changes that enhance your narrative while staying true to your core of your story. So I got feedback once that was saying they would really like to, um, to know more about like their work schedule. And it was about uh, a servant who was really like a slave and, um, uh, and there were I was like their work schedule is they work until they fall asleep, you know? Yeah, but when do they go home to see their family? I was like, I don't think that's very important in the prologue. And they're like, yeah, but I would like to know that. And I think you should you should do that. But it was the main character was not the character that they were, you know what I'm saying? Like it so it didn't fit the if the main character was the character, maybe, maybe, you know, you put in uh wish I could see my family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but they weren't, they were, they were uh, at most a secondary or th a tertiary character in, in the uh, moment. But, uh, another one is, uh, and I have nothing against erotica, however, but I am not writing erotica, but I had a note that said, you should be more descriptive with sex scenes. And, uh, and I was like, why? And they're like, cause I like that. And I was like, oh, okay, well you should write that book, <laughs> but this is not the book I am writing. So. Sometimes feedback is more subjectively uh, the version of the book they would like to see. And uh, that kind of feedback. Anyway, number two, goals. The goals for the fifth, the goals for the fifth draft. The short of it, focus on refining rather than rewriting. Make sure each change serves a clear purpose, enhancing the story or deepening character arcs. Pay particularly, uh, pay particular attention to scenes or dialogues that were confusing or fell flat during the table read. Now, the long of it. All right. Precise judgment, uh, precise adjustments are that are, are designed to address specific feedback rather than rewriting large portions of the script. This is the fifth draft. You should not be rewriting or adding new scenes or taking scenes away. You can, but it does influence the process because you have to have it reread again or rewitnessed, especially if you add a new scene or if you take a scene out or if you move scenes. All right. This is all about just refining areas, you know, adjusting certain things, maybe uh, adding, buffing up the emotional element. And uh, this keeps the script structure intact while enhancing clarity and engagement. Because once you change the structure, the process goes back a few steps. 
which is fine if that's what you want to do, by the way. Like, it's okay to do that. If, if you don't, you can't do major revisions, right? And that's why these are supposed to be like purpose-driven revisions. And uh, you should know what those, those uh, you should know what the purpose of the revisions are, whether it's going to be for clarity or uh, if there's a confusing plot that you have to adjust or if you have to deepen a character or improve the pacing. All right. The other thing is ensure that transitions between scenes are smooth, 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 smooth and logical. If uh, feedback indicates confusion about the progression of events, focus on clarifying these transitions. And of course, in a script, dialogue is a very important. So you want to tighten dialogue to make it sharper and more character specific. Uh, especially in areas where feedback suggests it was stilted and unnatural. Like, what's the deal? Why? Why? What's the deal with that? All right, number three, understanding the cleanup proce process. The short of it, remove redundancy, tighten dialogue, and ensure that scenes transition smoothly into the next. Improve descriptions and actions to make them more vivid and precise. Check that all changes maintain the screenplay's tone and character consistency throughout. A couple things here. Format and style of script, there is a standard. But remember, once you understand the rules, start breaking the rules. Uh, Quiet Place did this where like one page was like 10 steps. And then the next page was like five steps. And the next page was like three steps. Next page. That's all it said. It said, you know, um, my nose is itchy. Uh, and then there are other scripts where like the stuff is like all over the place or there's like things, you know, on it and, or notes it, they're like in the script, you know, like weird notes and stuff like that. As if somebody was like a sociopath, it was a story about a sociopath and like you saw their sociopathic, you know, you can create tone with your script. So if you're going to start off with a, a standard format, that's fine. But remember, you could also create a tonality to the format. Um, but one of these, what this is really talking about is when you're looking at, uh, you know, uh, the, the, like the scene transitions or an action block, you know, traditionally you want four lines, you know, just because it looks, it looks cleaner and it's smoother and you should be really just saying what is on the page. Like, what are you seeing on screen and not necessarily like going into like internal thoughts, of the characters and stuff. Um, but you know, you also save pages because remember, every page is money, right? Every quarter page is money. So uh, these are things you'll be looking for. But again, it isn't a hard, fast rule. You can create tonality to the style of your script as well. But the long of it is you are trying to remove repetitive information and unnecessary exposition that can bog down the narrative. This could be anything from reiterating the, the look of the room. Like, why do we need that in several different action blocks? Um, you know, uh, our... our are they repeating stuff in the dialogue? Like, you know, we need to get the sword. And then like the next scene is like, the sword is the most important thing. We need to get it. And then the next you know, two scenes later, it's like, if we don't get that sword, you know, it's very important. We need to get it. Like you might, you might want to adjust that. Um, the other thing is, uh, you want to make sure that the style of your world within the script makes sense too, that the vivid descriptions of everything and uh, that it's, adding something <clears throat> you know there's a difference between you know uh there's a car you know he drove a car it was a fast muscle car right but if like the description is <clears throat> his car his car was from the from the uh the 60s or his car was from the the late 60s a pure muscle car in this time it was unheard of to drive something made of uh, something fueled by gas as technology has advanced in its time. But there was something about this car uh, that was purely him, right? There's something about that description that is telling you about the character as well. So, you know, you might, there you go. And then, of course, uh, character voice consistency is the character sound like the character in the dialogue. If you could take away those uh, the names above the dialogue, uh, can you say who the character is? And, of course, tone and style. You want to make sure the overall tone and style of your script uh, is consistent. Again, that comes down to format, you know, the way you style it and stuff like that. Uh, but also, like, a, does the script feel like a comedy? We'll make sure it feels like a comedy all through. Is it a pure thriller? 
and make it a thriller. Boop. When am I finished drafting? Uh, oh, the short of it. Recognize when, uh, you know, sub uh, subsequent feedback starts to become repetitive or contradictory, indicating that you may be approaching the final version. Assess whether the script aligns with your original vision and whether you feel it has reached its potential in terms of storytelling quality. So let's go into the long of that, you know. Your job as a writer is to recognize when new rounds of feedback begin to yield diminishing re returns. Is it nitpicking? Is it uh, opinions? Uh, is it subjective over objective? You know, but this usually occurs when changes no longer significantly improve the screenplay or when feedback becomes contradictory to your initial vision. For example, why are there no aliens? Because it takes place in the 19th. 1950s and uh, it's a romance. Um. Anyway, uh, you know, so there is a point where you have to say, all right, uh, I'm not getting the feedback I need. Right? The other thing is your vision. You know, you got to reflect on what the screenplay uh, fully represents when it comes to your vision and whether you've addressed the major concerns raised during the table read uh, that distracted from your original vision. So. <clears throat> There is a certain point where you have to put your foot down. I, uh, I know this is about music, but uh, the, the, I had a friend uh, who recorded multiple times one album over the course of like 10 years. And the reason is because they record the album with some musicians. They spend money on it. And then they would find a new musician and they'd be like, you know what, let's go back in and re-record because uh, I think you had a different style to the, the song. And so they re-recorded again. They didn't release it the first time, by the way. Uh, or the second time. And then they'd be just sitting on it, and then they're like, they get new equipment, and then they're like, you know what, I'm going to buy my own studio equipment. And then they do that, and then now they're recording every little thing, and you know they spend days and days and days on small parts to make it perfect, right? Uh, they did this for 10 years, and then they released it, and it was an album that was definitely not of the time. Um, but, hey, listen, it's art. You know, have fun with it. But there is a certain point where you or someone else has to say, yo, just put that out. Whew. If you like uh, what you hear on this channel and uh, you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And uh, also remember, uh, there's a merchandise now underneath the videos. Oh, a little bit here and a little bit there helps. Question. What's the most challenging feedback you've ever received on a script and how did you address it? Let me know in the comments below. And again, that's address it, not address. I hate my I hate my jokes too. Uh, final thoughts on this whole process. Now, uh, rewriting a screenplay, especially after receiving feedback from a table read, is an opportunity to see your work through fresh eyes. Embrace this feedback as a vulnerable, or I mean a valuable tool. Embrace this feedback as a valuable tool for growing and improving. Each piece of advice, whether it praises your strengths or highlights areas needed uh, refinement, is a stepping stone towards creating a more polished and engaging narrative. The goal of your fifth draft is not to start anew, but to refine and enhance. Focus on clarifying the unclear, strengthening the weak, and polishing the rough without dismantling the core structure and spirit of your original script. This approach ensures that your revisions are targeted and effective, improving your screenplay without losing the essence of what made it unique in the first place. Balancing the feedback from various sources, actors, audience members, and personal observations requires the ability for discernment. Not all feedback will equally uh, come out to be useful and it's crucial to weigh each suggestion against your creative vision and the screenplay's uh, objectives prioritize changes that align with your story's needs and your goals as a writer because writing is inherently uh, a, a very specific laid out process right and each draft should bring you closer to the most compelling and uh, a complete version of your story well it might seem laborious okay each revision is an opportunity to enhance your screenplay's impact, deepen 
your characters and ensure that your narrative flows seamlessly. Recognizing when your screenplay is ready to move beyond the fifth draft involves understanding when you're uh, when you've addressed the critical feedback effectively and when additional changes yield min minimal improvements. You know, when feedback becomes repetitive or contradictory, it may indicate that your script has reached its potential and is ready for the next steps, whether that be further professional edits or beginning to pitch to studios and uh, agents. Use the experience of rewriting based on table read feedback as a learning opportunity. Each screenplay and each draft teaches you more about the craft of writing and the intricacies of storytelling. Carry these lessons forward into the future and future projects and continue to refine your approach to both writing and revising. So uh, there you go. Uh, the, the, the next video in this series uh, will be the final video for a while uh, on this process. Um, however, uh, the next video itself will be about a new process of writing uh, scripts, and it'll be all in one video. I'm going to take all the steps and put it into one video, and uh, I'll explain what they are, and then we'll just give a little a little quick uh, detail on it. We're not going to go into deep deep dives like I did with this series, uh, because a lot of the things we've already had deep videos for. However, in the future, I may uh, do videos on each of the new steps, but ultimately, as always, a writer should be uh, advancing and enhancing and assimilating new ideas into their process. Always evolve uh, to become better because that's the whole point. Knowledge is knowledge. And the first video I did in this series was like two years ago. And uh, even that was a new style of writing for me. Uh, so every every you know year or so, I kind of try to uh, uh, grow and learn. and read Because you, you got to always try. You got to shake things up sometimes. Anyway. As always, peace and harmony, truth and action, and keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time, and I love you. Bye!